Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Nerdy Metal Dude channel. I'm a nerdy metal dude. Uh, today we got a little something different going on, but first, the music in the intro. It's Accept. They're a band who's been around since 1976. I started listening to them in the early 80s, went to see them live. I think I've seen them live a couple of times. They're really good. They're still touring. They've got a new album coming out soon. That song was Beat the Bastards off their Blood of the Nations album from 2010. They've done five albums since. They're still cranking them out. Wolf Hoffman, awesome guitarist. Uh, very classically influenced as well. He, he does some stuff that's like very, you know, it reminds me of like Mozart on steroids or something. It's freaking great. Okay, don't forget to like and subscribe. And, oh yeah, I want to put the word out. <clears throat> I'm looking to step out of my comfort zone with uh, European weapons, and I'm thinking about Asian weapons, like katana and jian. Hey, so, um, if you know a good manufacturer that's reasonably priced, that keeps them pretty close to, you know, original manufacturing, like uh, differential tempering or heat treating and so on uh yeah let me know uh, let me know where to start looking because i really i i could but yeah I'd, I'd rather trust the community to point me in the right direction rather than experimenting that's the whole idea of having resources like this isn't it i don't know i think so anyway um so let's get rolling uh, I was cutting with the German longsword and ran into some issues. And, alright, what happened was I was cutting with it and it was not cutting good. I was using the out of box edge. Okay? And I was like, ah, maybe the edge is kind of crappy. It sure feels sharp, though, you know. So, but I went ahead and threw a little whetstone on there and thought, you know, that's all I did with the Italian longsword, right? And it started cutting better. So I went ahead, and here's what I got. Okay, that was sort of satisfactory. It, it was better now you can see this cut lands it lands towards the what happened on my oh it lands towards the you know farther end of the blade i know you can't see me pointing but it, <laughs> uh, but that's not the best cutting spot for the blade well then here <laughs> i gotta see if i can find that look on my face hey, look at that that it's like like what is this like you could see it was sort of spitting out a little bit but like, yeah, oh my. so I ended up down a rabbit hole I was like okay I, I'm gonna have to either sharpen it more or go back to my original thought of blade geometry there was one one review i saw where they said the blade on the german longsword looked just like the italian longsword but i know they're quite different the german longsword has a much thicker blade um and there's the issue so i'll give you a glimpse at what i was going into because i was like well we got to address it now i was sort of trying to step my way up to it but there you can see you know i'm i was working blade geometries out and, and then i got into fullers and yeah it it just turned into a whole thing but talking in the comments with a uh, sinister swordsman uh he made a suggestion that i do a collection video just because I had mentioned I had some certain things so I'm gonna get the little stuff out of the way that's why what is all this stuff I'll give you a quick peek and I did some cutting actually uh, with it and if I go here all right now this one we've looked at 
Uh, and this we've looked at. So we got this other stuff here that's all kind of interesting. Uh, all right, there's a, uh, it's a 60 pound draw weight, 54 inch AMO. Uh, I shot it at a goose once. <laughs> it was flying too. And it was cool, the arrow. And, I was, and the arrow was actually you know, heading towards it, but they, they geese got radar. That goose was off. That arrow was coming, goose went the other way. He, good eyesight, man. <laughs> good on you. Um, <clears throat> and again, we see, you know, the Honshu. That's a um, recent addition. And I put it in here because I want. I mentioned it was beefy. And sometimes, sometimes it doesn't translate so well to video. So I laid it out next to machetes. And there you go. So, yeah, that's a, that's a big old knife. Um, now I'm going to move on. And I will show you this check this out now what is that thing i'm using and of course there's a weird old shovel that i found it's like a survival shovel yeah, you put it under the bed and you can smack someone with it if you need to i don't know <laughs> it's home protection uh, or in case i'm digging a trench uh, you see it cut very nicely it's got a stainless steel blade and so on. Um, let's see, I think I did some more cuts here. Here comes another. Oh yeah, there we go. Effortless cutting, actually. Whoop! See, barely, yeah, right through the can, right through the bottle. Uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, stainless, yeah, of course, it's stainless steel. And I've got it right here with me. I'll show it to you. There it is. Those are the handy dandy old nylon cover. And there it is. Collapses down, you, you know, handle comes apart. Somewhere in here there's a little, like a little saw blade. Yeah, here's a saw blade. You unscrew that and flip it around. And it turns into a little saw blade. And, and of course there is or you can make a little, looks like a little fishing spear or something too. But if you see there, it's got, it's got a sharpened edge there and kind of a saw blade here as well. A little aluminum turned handle and stuff like that. See how, you can see how good it cut though. Not bad. I didn't have that one on the table for that. Well, never mind. I can clean that up later. Okay, let's move on. What else did I cut with that day? All right, there it is. Ooh. Gerber machete. Now that, that's some of these things are like bargain bin or hardware store purchases of it that I ordered. I know the name Gerber. Gerber knives have always, they've always had a pretty good rep. So I went ahead and bought a Gerber machete, and you can see very effortless cutting. That's Wink. I just glided it through. And it looks like I'm going to hit the stand, but I don't. I bring it up and it cuts just fine. Gerber machete. Feels like it's a soft vinyl handle. Soft vinyl handle. Saw back. This one was... Right, you notice the point is a little... Uh, juked up there. Well, what happened was I, I used to keep this out for home protection. It's one apartment. I had a little teeny studio apartment, but I kept it hanging on the wall on a coat hook. Out of the sheath, too, in case I needed it. The neighborhood wasn't so hot. So, man, if I gotta protect myself, I gotta protect my stuff. And the thing is, is if you ever have to use something to protect yourself, uh, it's gonna get confiscated by the authorities at least until the court, court is settled or whatever. So, you know, I, mean, I don't want them taking a, you know, sword. <laughs> so the machetes, you can get them you know, all over the place. Uh, there it is. It's a nice machete. In fact, I think it's kind of similar to Rick Grimes' red-handled machete from the early days of Walking Dead. That's one of the reasons I... Some of the, I was sort of into the zombie apocalypse thing when Walking Dead came out and stuff. 
Now, I've been collecting swords a lot longer than I've been watching Dead, but I've been watching zombies since I was a kid, too. I had Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Midnight Shows, all that stuff. But, no. Sweet. Gerber's a good name. I would highly recommend it. I like it. But anyway, I had this hanging on the coat hook, and I was vacuuming one day. The place was really small. I rubbed up against it. It fell off the coat hook, down the wall, and hit the cord of the running vacuum cleaner. Of course, it arced and burned a nice, neat little hole right through the edge. <laughs> so, so I filed the edge down and brought it back closer to its original shape. And I, that way I don't have it, the tip snagging up. But you got plenty of snag snag surfaces on this thing anyway. But this is, you know, wilderness type stuff. But very nice at cutting. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay, I know which one that is. All right, very good. That was a nice successful cut there. Whoop. Okay, we'll look at that one. Uh, that one would be here. It just says it just says stainless china on it. It's a, uh, I guess that's sort of a kukri, I don't know, bolo knife something. It's just. That's a chopper, though. It seems to cut pretty well. That's a false edge. The, the false edge is not sharpened. Um, but, yeah. Nice little... Nice little dude. That was under a bed somewhere in a closet. You know, hidden in the closet. Somewhere. Let's move on. Let's go faster. Spring, of course. Ah, here we go. Which one is that? Oh, okay. Yeah, I know that. It's another machete, the other one. Well, it is coming. Oh, yeah, it came in two pieces, so <laughs> that's what we want. Here, we can see it a little better here. That's fine. Uh, up there, there goes the top. Sweet. Alrighty. And. Ah! Wait a minute. That's the same bottle. Okay, the one I'm cutting with there is right here. This is sort of a falchion shaped machete. See that? It's pretty sweet. I like the shape. This one is by Whetstone Cutlery. Stainless steel, China. Okay, that's fine. But, look at that darn bottle. <laughs> Makes me wonder, what are they making these bottles out of? I don't know. But, all right, we'll move on. Let's see. Yeah, it just went right off of there. Uh, German longsword, and that bottle bounced off a of machete. I got the Gerber. That's the Gerber machete. And we saw it cut. Boom. There it goes. Just squirted a little bit out of the... And yeah, just like when the German longsword hit it. Gerber machete again. Jeez. What are you going to do? I, I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't, I'm flummoxed. Well, what was I? Hey, there comes the shovel. The edged shovel. Now it's weakening up a little bit. You get it very, it's been squirting a little bit and dripping a little bit of water out and stuff. That damn bottle did not want to die. Oh. There, here, over here. Undoubtedly the toughest two liter I've ever heard of. <laughs> it's got to be the toughest two liter I've ever heard of. <laughs> it was. All right, and here's the last one that wasn't in the picture. There, I'll show you that one in a second. This is a, uh, like a, I don't know, sort of a pseudo, pseudo ninja sword or something. I don't know. Um, anyhow, here it is. Uh, what do they call them? Ninja, ninja, I don't know. I'd have to look it up. Here, hold on. I got Google here. It is, no, oh, no, you're not there. I have to go here.
Yeah, in Lotto. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's sort of like a little bit of a shorter, straighter katana, right? Ninjat nin ninjato? Am I getting that right? I, very bad with some pronunciation. But here's that one. Now, I don't... Uh, this is made in Pakistan, by the way. And it is not a real ninjato. <laughs> it's... First of all, scale construction on the handle, all right? Um, stainless steel blade, not good. Not good for sword blades, really. And we know why, because stainless is brittle. Uh, it's more brittle. Than, uh, for longer runs. The longer the span, the more chance of breakage you get with the stainless. But yeah, there's no distal taper. It's just a slab with an edge. I was an edge. It is the edges. It is slightly hollow ground on the edge, but it did cut. Oh, uh, but it's oof, this thing is heavy. It's heavy and kind of unwieldy. But um, yeah, there's that. I don't. I don't even remember when I bought this or where. It just was in the closet somewhere uh, or in the, in one of the bedroom closet. Uh, now. Hey, this this is interesting too. I remember running into the oh well, okay. This is a hardware store special. I was hoping to turn this into a project. A little fireman's act, a short one. Uh, this is what twenty inch, two pound. It says two and one quarter. So I guess it's two and a quarter pound axe head. But you know, with the spike on it and everything like that. I picked this up at like Harbor Freight, I think. Yeah. Eleven ninety nine or something. <laughs> I don't know, but I thought that might be a good project. Grind it up a little, you know, grind it, reshape it a little bit. Yeah, one of these years. I'm still working on that knife. So, mm -hmm. um, oh, all right. And on that photo I showed you, there we go. Made by Estwing. Estwing, we would say here, but. Uh, from what I read, the uh, actual founder of the company in Rockford, Illinois, uh, he was a Swedish immigrant years ago. But they are mainly known for these, which also make great weapons, but I don't want to give anybody too many ideas. Here's another rest wing hammer. They're very popular, very sturdy. Um, this, this axe here, the double bit axe, they said... Uh, you know, it's made for military professionals, I think, was one of them, and competition. So it made, and they said great balance, so it could be for throwing. But I just thought, but well, that's really unique. And these are a little, this one was 50, somewhere around 50 bucks, maybe a little more. Um, but S Wing, yeah. Um, there's my grandfather's hammer here. Um, so, it's older than I am, most likely. But, yeah, they, this, this got the washer handle. They were well known for the washer handle. Leather washer. And then, of course, there are more. It's like a framing hammer, I guess. But, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, good hammer. But then I picked up another one. Now, I got. I was like, yeah, that's pretty good. So, I got, <clears throat> I got this bad boy. The old axe, camp axe, long handled camp axe. They do have a shorter one, but I like the extended handle. You know, a little more leverage in there, you know? It's got the hammer back on it too, so it is a camp axe, but hmm, not bad. But, you know, uh, there's, there's one guy out there does a lot of sword videos and medieval type stuff uh, and he's always talking about power of the stick what that is stained closet rod you can get them in all different diameters and stuff these are oak they're oak but 
in all actuality, they're not solid oak. They're, it's glued, uh, you know, they're glued and fused together and then turned. But, <clears throat> hell, I even got one and made a, you know, five and a half foot staff for myself. I do have a, I do have an oak walking stick I bought from a Ren Fair once. And that'll smack someone too, but I'm keeping that with the medieval stuff. But that's the beginning. This is the this is the start of the this is just the stuff laying around. And again, this is accumulated over some time. Uh, but well, here's new, and that's new. The rest of that, this I've had for 40 years, at least. Oh, yeah, where are you? Oh, I got all these little knives here. Nice little buck knife, buck hunting knife. Stainless, of course, but hey, it's a knife, so that's okay. And then I got these goofy, there's always like survival knives and stuff. This one's got a, you can fold that back. That is a slingshot because, well, here, you got a sharpening stone on the back. Oh, <laughs> there it is, a little sharpening stone built on. Uh, inside, inside here you've got this, I don't even know if that'll come out, anyway there's a, yeah there's all kinds of stuff in this thing, here, come here, see if I can pry that out of there, there it is, yeah okay, there's a whistle, we got a whistle in there, uh, we got a little and a little, oh, a little saw. I don't know, there's bottle opener, a little bit of lanyard in there. Oh, there's a whistle. Let's see, does the whistle work? There you go. Emergency whistle. But there's the, uh, there's the rubber band, rubber tubing for the slingshot. Put it on that guy. Got your little slingshot. And then... This is just a bag of tricks on this one. Then you take that out, open this up. I threw away the band-aids because the band-aids got to be like 10 years old. There with a little cotton wadding to keep that from rattling around. But inside of here you got, whoa, well there's a safe, couple of safety pins, some matches, there's a razor, a teeny pencil, and there's fish hooks, sinkers, and fishing line. So, that's, that's a little survival kit, all packed into one little blade. Blades held on by a pin, so they can give you the hollow handle. So, I'm not how, uh, yeah, I don't know how, but, you know, what kind of, um, what is that? Tomahawk brand is what this is. But, uh, I guess that's like a nail, that little hole there is for, uh, nail pulling or something, I don't know, fence, or I think they said something about a wire cutter, fence breaker, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't been in a situation where I needed to use it. There's another one. This is sort of a K-bar style, but it is not a K-bar, you can tell. There is a working compass in the back, I checked it earlier. It does point north, so, eh. but yeah. It's Stainless china, just kind of a generic, but I kind of like the nylon sheet. Uh, nylon sheet. Isn't that bad? And then you got a little, uh, not an original, of course, this is Chinese stainless. It's got a real leather washer handle and stuff, real leather here. It's FSSF, Fairbairn Sykes. Is it Fairbairn Sykes? Combat dagger, British forces. Got a head knocker on the back for a pommel. It's not a bad little knife, actually. Tiny. It, it's very small compared to my other dagger, but that do the job. You only need to use it once to save your skin. Okay, well, that's all that stuff for now. <laughs> It went a lot longer than I thought it would, too. Oh, my goodness. How was my counter at? 27 minutes. Half an hour. I didn't think I'd get 15 minutes out of this shit. That's because I run off at the mouth. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm going to cut you all loose, but rock on. And hey, check out Accept, man. If you haven't heard of them before. If, if you have, they're still running around, man. And hey, uh, the poll. Oh, don't forget the poll. Don't forget to like and subscribe. The poll's asking, what got you into this? What makes you a blade person? I don't know. Well, I want to find out what makes other people tick who get into this stuff. You know? But, again, have a good one, everybody. Hey, thanks for putting up with me. Rock on.